Welcome to In The Workshop, a Stuart 504 boiler renovation, part 3. And this episode starts off with some painting. Not a lot of painting, just a small amount. I'm just spraying some red oxide primer over the top of the etch primer that coats the cast iron parts of the boiler mountings. I'm giving this part quite a generous coat of primer. Not enough to make it run everywhere, just enough to get good coverage and to give a good base for the top coat. In this clip I'm spraying the inside part of the side panels. I'm spraying the inside parts first because once these are dry and I turn them over these inside surfaces may get marked as I paint the outside. But that's not a problem because these are going to be covered in thermal insulation. The second boiler mounting plate is the last part to be painted. I nearly forgot about this. Even though this boiler is not new as such, in fact it's quite old, it's never been in steam. So before any pressurisation of the boiler with compressed air or steam, I need to perform a hydraulic test to make sure that it will be suitable as a pressure vessel. And as this is a new boiler, I'm fairly confident that the hydraulic test will be successful. In this clip, I'm fitting blanking plugs. The first one's gone in, that's a quarter by 32 blanking plug, and the second one is going in at the top. These are where the water gauge is going to fit. The bush on the top right of the boiler back head is for the pressure gauge. I found all these blanking plugs in my box of assorted blanking plugs, and I made this one quite a while back, and the piece of hexagon bar that I made it from is a bit bigger, but it is still a quarter by 32 threads per inch blanking plug, just like the other two. The bottom boiler bush for the clack valve is slightly different. This one has been threaded 5 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch. So with the four boiler blanking plugs fitted to the boiler back head, it's just time to give them a slight nip up to make sure they're very tight. And this, in conjunction with the copper washers and the Loctite 542 that I applied, should seal the boiler bushes perfectly. On the top of the boiler there are two more bushes, and both of these are threaded 5 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch. I originally fitted a boiler bush in the first one, the one nearest to the back head, but I've removed that one for the moment. I need to make an adapter so I can get some pressure into this boiler. I'm turning a piece of brass hexagon down to 5 sixteenths of an inch, and as usual, I first of all set my micrometer using a 5 sixteenths drill. I find it quicker doing it this way. So with frequent application of the micrometer, I eventually get this part to a perfect 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And before any expert engineers jump in and tell me that, oh well the 5 sixteenths drill may not be perfectly 5 sixteenths, I would just like to say that I always check the numbers on the micrometer before using it. It's just quicker to start with a twist drill. So now the hexagon part has been turned down to 5 sixteenths of an inch, I'm threading it using a die in a standard die stock. Why don't I use a die in my tailstock die holder? Because all of my tailstock die holders are currently full of dies that I use frequently. I like to be quite efficient in the speed department, because I really hate wasting time removing chucks, removing dies, refitting this and refitting that. Now normal engineers don't seem to mind this, but it drives me nuts. So using a standard hand die stock in the lathe is okay, provided that you use the tailstock chuck to keep it square to the work. I need to thread the other end of the adapter 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. After drilling a hole which is 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter down the centre of the work, I part it off. And in this clip I'm forming the cone in the end of the part for the coned union, and for this I'm using a centre drill. And then using yet another tailstock die holder, this time fitted with a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch die, I thread this end of the fitting. In this clip I'm fitting the adapter using some Loctite 542 into the hole where I previously removed the blanking plug. And that's because I need to fill the boiler entirely with water, and the way the boiler sits on the bench it slopes slightly, so it's logical to fit the blanking plug at the bottom end of it, the lowest part, and fill it with water at the highest part. After tightening up the union nut which is fitted to the pipe leading from the boiler test rig, it's most important to remove all traces of water from the boiler. That way, if any water comes out of the boiler during the test, you'll be able to see it clearly. The boiler test rig tank is full of water, so now I can just pump up the pressure. I should really test this to 120 pounds per square inch because it's rated at 60 psi. But to be perfectly honest, rightly or wrongly, I do like a margin of error, so I would always test the boiler, generally speaking, to 160 pounds per square inch, which is twice working pressure for a boiler running at 80 pounds per square inch. 
This boiler is more than capable of sustaining 80 pounds per square inch anyway, but as far as I'm aware, the working pressure for a standard Stuart 504 boiler is 60 pounds per square inch. The hydraulic test was successful. Sufficient time has now elapsed, 15 minutes to be exact, to show that the boiler is more than suitable to become a pressure vessel. Now that the test is complete, I need to drop the pressure inside the boiler. And I'm doing this by very carefully and very slowly undoing one of the blanking plugs. And I can never figure out why the water jet always points in my direction. Look where it is. Why can't it go in the other direction? So now, with a very wet leg, I continue with the job. In the same way as the myth about buttered toast falling onto the floor, butter side down always, whenever I slacken off a boiler blanking plug after a pressure test, the jet of water always comes in my direction. Very, very strange. Anyway, talking about water, it's time to empty the water back into my water container. And now the exciting part. Well, not really exciting, that's maybe the wrong word. And now it's time to fit the steam fittings to the boiler itself. Starting with fitting a drain cock. This is a brand new drain cock from Stuart Models, and I'm fitting it to the bottom part of the water gauge. To make sure the drain cock is in the correct position, I'm using two copper shim washers, both of different thicknesses, but together they make up exactly the right size. When fitting drain cocks of this type, either to boiler fittings or on a steam engine, they need to be just past finger tight. And if you use Loctite 542, there's no leakage whatsoever. When fitting things like this, water gauges, clack valves, or anything that needs to be in a set position, Ideally, you need a washer of the correct thickness so that the component sits in the right position. And the easiest way to do this is to buy some shim washers. Quite a few shim washers, one for each size. The sizes that I generally use are 3 sixteenths, quarter inch, 5 sixteenths, and 3 eighths of an inch. And you need to buy more than one pack, that way you have plenty of them, because sometimes you can't get the combination right. Whenever I go up to Blackgate's engineering for any parts, I will generally add one or two packs of shim washers. And believe me, it's worth taking the trouble to get the combination right, because anything's better than shearing off the fitting itself, or stripping the thread in a boiler bush. It's time now to fit the gauge glass, and thanks to the shim washers, the top and bottom fittings are in perfect alignment. I don't know where I got this gauge glass from, but it's got a white line at the back with a blue line in the centre, and it makes the water level very visible. And having first measured the glass, I'm now cutting it to length, or should I say breaking it. I just score it with the edge of a needle file and snap it like this. Health and safety warning, you need to wear eye protection when you do this. And also the edges of the glass are very sharp. You can get rid of the sharp edge by heating the glass until the sharp edge disappears. But I like to live dangerously, it's the only excitement to get in my life these days. As you can see in this clip, there is an O-ring inside each of the nuts that bears down on the glass tube as you tighten the nuts, but a word of caution, do not over tighten the nuts, otherwise the glass will fracture. And it's also worth mentioning that you need to make sure that the white part of the glass tube is at the back. As a general rule when working with model steam boilers, all of the fittings, including the gauge glass nuts, need to be just past finger tight, just nipped up, not really torqued up heavily. This clip shows me fitting the clack valve. And in this case, I didn't need a washer of any type. It just fitted perfectly up against the boiler bush, and this is fine if you're using Loctite 542. The next fitting to go in place is the water gauge and its siphon. You will notice I'm using two spanners, one to support the water gauge and one to tighten the nut. And once again, don't over tighten these components. Don't forget the washers either side of the banjo union. And don't use too much Loctite 542 because you don't want to block up the hole in the banjo union. The last part of the water gauge to go in place is the top cap. I didn't use a washer on this part, just a small amount of Loctite 542 does the trick. The next fitting to go in place is a safety valve. Normally I wouldn't use an aluminium washer, but I thought in this case I'd give it a try, because I'm curious to see if the Loctite 542 acts as a barrier between the copper washer and the boiler bush therefore preventing cathodic corrosion. This is generally the method that Stuart used to use for fitting the taps. There's a stainless steel adapter that, generally speaking, needs to fit into the tap and be locked in there tightly. And once a stainless steel adapter is fitted to the tap, you can screw the tap into the boiler bush. 
I have some more cleaning up to do on this tap, so I'm only fitting it temporarily. That's it for the boiler fittings. What I'm doing at the moment is hammering a piece of brass bar into a hole that I've drilled in a piece of wood. And why am I doing this? Well, it's to support the chimney. I'm about to spray paint this chimney using some red oxide primer, and I don't want it to fall on the floor in the outer part of the workshop, which is currently full of leaves that blow in through the open door. I just don't think that it would be a very good look if the chimney resembled a tree in autumn. Although thinking about it, a model steam boiler on the window ledge with a bonsai tree growing out of the part where the chimney should be would be quite artistic. Now where can I get a bonsai tree from? Anyway that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.